All right, we're going to be playing with optics today. Uh, we're, going to be, we're going to be using something called a spectrophotometer. And a spectrophotometer is basically uh, if you input light into this thing and then you shine it on a diffraction grating, okay, then a rainbow comes out. Okay, so blue, green, red, yellow, cyan, all the different colors of the rainbow come out over here. And if you put a CCD right here, the CCD will see all of those. There'll be a whole bunch of pixels here. And each pixel will see a different wavelength. And uh, that's a uh, spectrophotometer, all right? And so we'll be using this one. Uh, I'll show you that uh, hooked up a little later. But what we're, what we're gonna be looking at is we're gonna be looking at LEDs, okay? So uh, we have an LED. It's got two posts and it has a little chip in here and a little bond wire, but it's basically a diode, okay? And so we have a diode and I'm gonna be putting through a constant current, putting let's say 10 milliamps. So I'm gonna be putting in plus and minus, um, gonna be putting in 10 milliamps into the diode, so hold it at a constant current. And then uh, that's gonna uh, output light, okay? And that light's going to come out, and we're going to we're going to put it into the spectrophotometer. Now, my spectrophotometer has a fiber optic, and so the fiber optic comes around, and whatever light goes into the fiber optic will make it over here to the diffraction grating. Okay, so my test setup is going to look like this: there'll be a fiber optic, and then there'll be an LED. So here's our LED we're going to test. Okay, and then I'm going to put it in a tube. I'm going to put it in a white, a white tube. And the white tube just keeps the room light, which is up here. I don't want the room light to affect the measurement. So I'm going to, I'm going to shield the room light. And then uh, if there's any stray light here inside, it'll, it'll bounce all around and it'll get into the fiber optic. And um, that's how we're going to have it all set up. All right. And uh, so we are going to hook this up, look at the LED. And then we're going to raise the temperature. Okay, we're going to increase the temperature, and I'm going to do that by using a hot air station. I'm going to be blowing hot air onto my LED, so the temperature of the LED goes up. So if you want to guess now, if you heat up an LED, what happens to the light? Okay, and uh, I'll give you a clue. Two things happen to the light. Okay, so you have to guess both. Uh, two different things happen uh, when you heat up the LED. So let's go take a look. All right, this is my spectrophotometer. It's a USB 2000. It's a really old, uh, really old spectrophotometer. It's USB based and it, its output is fiber optic, or actually its input is fiber optic. So any light that gets through this fiber optic uh, will be seen by a diffraction grating and a CCD. And then will just be displayed uh, real time on a display. So you can see here, if I point it at the uh, room lights up above, you see white light, you see a blue LED and uh, yellow phosphors. So it is a, uh, um, an LED lighting in this room. If I point it at the screen, uh, you can see some different spectrum. Uh, this is because this particular display is a cold cathode display. It has a cold cathode fluorescent tube as the backlight. And so you can see all of the phosphors in the, uh, in the cold cathode. Uh, if I pointed at my iPhone, you can see red, green, and blue. Uh, so um, it's uh, the LEDs in the uh, in the iPhone. And you can point it at different things that look look at things. Um, we're going to be pointing it at uh, some LEDs today. All right, and uh, see what they do. I think you might be surprised. All right, so here's the test setup like I drew. Uh, the uh, fiber optic comes in here and it goes into a, into a tube that just shields it from ambient light and it kind of uh, makes sure all the light gets bounced in there. It's like a poor man's integrating sphere type of thing. Um, and there's an LED here and we are measuring the uh, peak, peak wavelength. So here's, here's the uh, spectrum and we can move it over a little bit. Let's see here. So I'd say the peak uh, peak's about there. Yeah, there we go. Peak. So the peak is at uh, 628 nanometers, 628 nanometers. Uh, so now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hot air gun and I'm going to warm up the, uh, 
I'm gonna warm up the LED and we will watch it over here. So let me, let me start that over since you didn't get to see it. So I, I warmed it up and two things happened. One was the intensity fell and it, then it shifted right. So let me do it again. Uh, so you can see as I heat up the LED, uh, the intensity goes down and the peak wavelength shifts to the right. And if I remove the heat, it should go back to where it was. Um, so this is important if you're building um, RGB lighting, right? If uh, the light bulb heats up and shifts red, then your color temperature of your light bulb would change. Or if you're building a backlit television and you're using red LEDs, as the television gets warm, the red will move to a different wavelength. Um, so yeah, so these things are important. Okay, so I'm going to be using a, a blue LED this time. Uh, we have a peak wavelength of around uh, 455 nanometers, and uh, let's heat up the uh, let's heat up the LED, and we'll see what happens. It is shifting, shifting to the right and going down. So there you go.